Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. I have a piece of fabric. This piece measures 27 by 21 inches. It's an awkward size to efficiently make a bag with this fabric and use up all of the fabric that's in there. So I've decided that rather than having a bag with one color, I'm going to use two fabrics. They're both the same awkward size and these are both uh, rescued upholstery sample fabrics. So what I'm going to do is actually make four bags. I've decided that if I fold this into quarters, this is actually going to make a nice um, small bag, perhaps even a crossbody bag if I go this way. So I'll cut this up into four rectangles and I'll do the same for this one here. And the plan is to use one of these on the back one on the front. I think I might try a couple of different things with it anyway. And I may do a couple of different sized boxed corners so that we can see how the outcome changes uh, with different effects. Hang around and we'll make this together. It's going to be a zippered bag. We're going to be using regular zips for this project. Both pieces of fabric measure about 27 by 21 inches. I'm going to lay them both together and then I'll cut them in half straight down the center. And my first thought was to cut this into fours, but I've got another idea that I might try out as well. So I've got both layers of fabric together and I'm going to cut straight down the center of the two pieces. And to make things easier for myself, I'm going to square this up so that I've got all of my pieces the same size. That way I can cut my lining out at the same size as well. And it'll be easier for me to um, make a batch of bags and not have to worry too much about different sizes. Okay, after cutting these in half and trimming all the sides and everything to make it all nice and square, I have four pieces of fabric now, two of each of the main, and they are 13 inches wide by 21 inches long, and I've gone and cut out four pieces for the lining at the same size, so 13 by 21 inches. I think I'd like some stabilizer on this. This is a really soft upholstery fabric. So I'm going to cut up some batting to the same size. Okay, the batting's cut out to the same size, 13 by 21 inches. I'm going to go and fuse that onto the wrong side of these upholstery fabrics, and then we can get started. All right, I fused the pallen onto the back of all of my main pieces of fabric. And I'm going to set aside two of them for now. So I'll set aside one of each color and I'll think about what I'm going to do with that one. For now, I'm going to work on these pieces of fabric. So I've got two linings and two outer pieces of fabric with my pallen. I'm going to cut all of these in half again because I'm going to have a two-tone bag for this. I'm going to just place all the fabric together and line them up so that they're all perfectly aligned and I'll cut them in one go. So what I have is 13 by 21 inches, half of the 21 is 10 and a half inches. So that's the center there. I'm going to cut straight down the middle and there we have all of the pieces ready to go. I also have some zips. I want my zip to go across the longest side, which is the 13 inches. These are now 10 and a half inches by 13 inches, and the zip will go across this end. Now that we've got two pieces of lining on this side, we've got one main fabric and an opposing fabric. I'm going to set that one aside and work on this one. I'll keep all of the layers together because it's easier to cut everything out all at once. And we're doing the same thing with all of the layers as well. I have a bunch of templates that I like to use for my boxed bags. These are just made out of plastic and I've just marked a square and cut those out to the sizes that I might need. For the first one, I'm going to make a two inch box corner 
top and bottom and on each side. Our seam allowance is going to be about half an inch. So these ones are two inches. And I'll grab the other one. And the next one I'm going to do will have one and a half inch box corners. And now that I've determined what size I want my corners, I'm ready to cut this fabric out. Just make sure you've got everything lined up nice and evenly. And then you can cut out all your fabric. Okay, this is my two inch box corner bag and this will be my one and a half inch box corner. You can already see the difference just in half an inch with your fabric. The zips that I'm using here today are regular dress zips. These are 12 inches long. They're more than enough for the width of the fabric here. And let's start putting them together. I'm using double sided wash away quilters tape. This one is 5 16th of an inch wide and or eight millimeters. It's my preferred tape because it disappears after washing, but it also doesn't gum up your needles. So a few people have been commenting that they've been trying wash away, uh, they've been trying the double sided tape and it's severely gumming up your needles. You do need to find one that is specific for sewing, uh, not for paper crafts, and then you'll be right. I'll set that one aside. We'll work on the two inch fabric first. And we're working on the widest part. Okay, so we've got 10 and a half inch this way, 13 inches this way, and we're going to put the zip on the longest edge. And we've got opposing fabrics here. I'll put my labels onto the bag shortly as well. So first of all, you want to determine which is going to be the front side or what you think is going to be the front side of your bag and what's going to be the back. I'm visualizing this to be the front of the bag and I'd like the bag to open from left to right. So I'll put the zip on that one first and I've got the opening at this end here. Run your tape along the edge, peel that back and you can just place your zip anywhere over the top of that section there. Doesn't matter that it's overhanging, all of that will be trimmed back later. We're not putting zipper tabs on this one either. And that's because I'm using a regular dress zip, which is I think about a number three, so it's not as heavy duty. And we're going to have the box corners sewn down. So place your zip over your fabric. Then take your lining and line up the same long edge with the edge of your zip. And run another row of tape along there. And we can line up our lining. So we want the lining to be faced down on top of the main fabric. Line up the boxed corners there and the top edge where the zip is. And just press that down. If you don't have double sided tape, use clips or pins, it won't matter. The technique to sew it together is all the same. So this one's right to go. That's my two inch bag. I'll take the one and a half inch bag and do the same thing with that. I'm going to have that as the front and I'll put this zip with the slider coming from the left, opening out to the right. And this is the one that's got the one and a half inch boxed corner. I like playing around with different variations of fabric. Even though you've got one size fabric doesn't mean all of your bags have to be exactly the same. So I do like playing around and having something a little bit different. Let's take these both to the sewing machine now. We'll sew down the long edge of the zip there on both of them. Once we've done that, open it out and while we're at the machine, we're going to top stitch those edges. So it doesn't matter which one you start with. Once 
Once you've done that, bring the lining around behind the main fabric. Line everything up nicely. You want the seam underneath to be going toward the bottom. Although I've used my zipper foot to insert the zip, I'm using my regular sewing machine foot now to do the top stitching. The zipper foot is narrower and doesn't sit nicely on top of the fabric. So especially when you're using upholstery fabric like this, you've got so much bulk here to stitch down that it's, you, you'll have more control over your fabric if you have your regular wider foot. And don't stitch too close to the top either. It'll make your stitching along here much more consistent. Okay, now we want to grab our other one with the one and a half inch corner and that'll be the opposing colour and we'll do the same thing, line up the tape, place the zip on top and line up the side seams then you'll know you've got it nice and straight on the edges and then you can line up the top. Another row of tape and the lining and we'll grab our two inch corner and we'll repeat that process. That's all ready to be stitched in place and so is this one here. I'm going to set these two aside for the time being and I wanted to get to this stage because I wanted to make sure that I didn't get mixed up with my zippers and the backs and fronts of things. I'm going to take the other fabric now and we're going to work on a couple of different size boxings again and this one we're going to keep the fabric in one piece, fold that in half, take a lining piece and we'll fold that in half as well. Place the main over the top of the lining, have the folds both facing at the bottom and for this one I'm going to have a two and a half inch boxed corner on the top and the bottom but what I need to account for is the seam allowance. So on the bottom here I've just got the fold and I don't have any seam at all. The fold is treated the same way a seam line would be. I'm going to have a half inch seam allowance on my bag and same on this side. Now knowing where my seam is I can place my boxed corner down. If I place this template down right on the very edge then it's going to be two inches one way, two and a half inches the other way it won't give me a proper box corner. So line your template up along the stitching line and along the fold. Both sides and at the top as well. Now even though the top is also going to have a seam line. It's going to have a zip added to it as well. So they kind of, the seam allowance and the zip kind of negate each other. That's why I'm not worrying about the size up here. It can be manipulated if it needs to be as well. So that's my two and a half inch. And this one here, I'm going to do something different again. I don't usually do this. In fact, I don't think I have done this before. Once again, I'm going to mark my half inch seam allowance on the side of the fabric. On this bag, I'm going to have two inches at the bottom. And I want to know what happens to a bag when you have a different size at the top. So I thought this might be a good experiment. I'm just making this up as I go. <laughs> so I've got my two inch template down here and I'll use a one and a half inch template at the top. And we'll see what happens when we sew this one up. Remember to place your lining underneath. We can now cut out all of the corners. Okay, so that's starting to look a little bit unusual, isn't it? So at the bottom here, we've got the fold on our main and the lining. 
and we've got this one here with a wider bottom than we have at the top and this one here has got great big chunks cut out of it. Let's see what happens with these bags. Once again I have got two different zips and when you're working with fabric that is only one piece it's a little bit more awkward inserting your zips when you've only got one piece of fabric like this compared to having the two separate pieces of fabric here. We can easily go and top stitch this zip with a fabric spread out. When you're working on a fabric with one piece, you want to have your zip quite large. If you have it too small when you close this up, it's going to be really awkward trying to get in there. So have a larger zipper for something like this with one piece of fabric than you normally would if you were either doing a um, using the continuous zips or if you had two separate pieces. So with this one here I'll run that tape along the top again and I'll place my zip face down and it doesn't matter that I've got so much of an overhang. I've got the closed end of the zip here. I'm going to place that end closer to the bag. It'll still all be cut off, but I have, I have a use for the end of the zip. So with all of that left hanging there, that'll make it easier for us to top stitch it. But I plan on using that. At least I think I do. Take your lining and some more tape. Place that over the top. If you're going to sew these to sell, then I recommend you have your labels already put on there. Okay, so we've got one side done. Set that one aside and we'll repeat that for this one as well. And with this one here, I'm going to spread the zip out nice and evenly. Okay, back to the machine, stitch that and that one, then we'll open it out and top stitch one side. And the other two that we haven't finished yet, we will sew the other side of the zip down and we'll also top stitch the layers as well. Now just the regular zipper foot on again and apply the zip the same way we did earlier. And once again we'll open out all the fabric, put the lining on the same side as the main and then we can top stitch. Okay we've finished the top stitching on the separate bag pieces. We can set that aside for now and we can put the other end of the zip on to the other side of the bag. Move your lining out of the way Grab the other end of your bag and bring the zip up in line with the top edge and line up your fabric on the edges as well. So we want to line up our boxed corners and then the top. Another strip of tape and we're just about done with this one. And we'll do the same process for the other one. And when we've done that, we'll take it back to the machine. We're going to sew the zip in place using our zipper foot. And then with our regular foot, we'll do the top stitching. The top stitching will be a little bit different when we do that uh, because we've got one zip that will actually open out to kind of like a V shape. You'll actually need to manipulate your fabric a little bit under your machine to get that top stitching done but I'll show you that when we get there. Now 
Now that we've done the zips on this one, we need to turn the bag the right way around. And you, you can open the zip to do that as well. So open that all the way. And we've done this side. That was the easy part. We've now got to do the top stitching on this side. We need to get this under the machine. So with this one here, because I've got the biggest opening along here, I'm going to start at this end here. So I'll just turn that so that the fabric is inside out, but it'll actually be the right side up when I'm sewing. So it is a little bit more fiddly, certainly a lot easier when you use a much longer zip than a short one that just fits. Make sure the layers of fabric are going in the right direction and then we can top stitch. The one that we've just done here, we left barely any room for the zipper tab at one end and had a huge opening at this end. So it made it a little bit difficult to get to the other end. This one here, because we've allowed excess, when we open this, it'll be easier to manipulate. Let's get in there. It, this one here has a little bit of a longer tail at the side, so it will be easier to sew that in place. And you can see it doesn't matter which end you start with, you just start wherever is comfortable for you, making sure you've got those layers out of the way. And that's done. So you can see at the moment the bags look very, very similar. There's very little difference between construction methods, whether you've got the folded fabric at the bottom or the open seams at the bottom. There's barely any difference whatsoever. It's just the sizing of the box corners and the way you do the top stitching for the zip. We need to close up the area where the zip is. And before we close up our zips, we need to open them. So we've got the closed, this is the end that's permanently closed, that's fine. We can go now and just stitch along here just to make sure that we close, we put a stop on the end of the zip there. This one here, you need to make sure that you open your zip at least part of the way. We need to go now and sew this, this section closed. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to sew over the zipper teeth because they spread apart when you sew them. I find the easiest thing to do is just to run some tape right on the very edge of the zip there. Doesn't matter if you stitch over the top of it because it'll peel off. So I'm going to sew straight across here and that will close up the zip and then I'll have my zipper open. I'm also going to stitch across this end here. So I'll do that for all of my zips before I do anything else now. This one here, I've got the short end, just going to stitch straight across. And this one here, just tape it. Oops. So when you tape it, you need to make sure that the zip is on the inside. <laughs> People sometimes think I make mistakes on purpose. Believe me, I don't. <laughs> Most of the time I forget to open my zip at all. Again, open your zip. It's in, you'd be surprised how easy it is to forget to open your zip. That just keeps the zips nicely spaced. Uh, you can, and it'll be much easier to sew straight over those teeth. We'll go to the machine and sew the ends of the zips down. Make sure you've got the slider in the center of your fabric. Just run over it back and forward a couple of times. Now with the zip securely in place, we can go and trim off all of the excess zip, zipper tape. I like keeping the ends of my zips so that I can use these as tabs inside bags later on. They just add a nice little feature to the bag. I don't cut the teeth off, I just use them as little side tabs in your bags. Okay, now we have our ends secure, our zips are going to be nice and safe in the middle there. And at this point, we want to have our zip open 
at least most of the way. With the fabric that has the opening at the bottom, take the outside pieces, place those right side together and take your lining pieces and place those right side together as well. We're now going to sew these side seams, this side here. We're going to sew the bottom seam on the main fabric and the bottom seam on the lining fabric. We're going to leave this section open, close this and this. So we can set that one aside, grab the one with the whole piece and we'll take the lining and bring that around to the other side, turn your bag inside out because we've got whole pieces of fabric for our lining and our main, we don't have to close up the bottom seam, but we do have to close up the side seam. We also need to have an opening for turning the bag through. So on the lining, I'll stitch this close by about an inch on one end and on the top end, and then leave this section open. And this is where we're going to turn the bag the right way around. So I can take all of that to the machine and sew the side seams, sew the bottom seams as well if we have openings and leave the opening at the bottom there, opening at the side and then we will come back and put some handles on and do the boxing. Remember we have a half inch seam allowance. It's important to backstitch at the beginning and the end of all of these. When we come to do the boxing we'll be pulling fabric apart at the stitch at the seam line and if you don't do the back stitch at the beginning and the end, your stitches will unravel. So at one end here, I'm just doing, I'm just closing it up by about an inch and move on and start again about an inch from the top. And that will leave a small opening for turning through later on. With this one that's got the opening at the bottom, I'm just going to leave a nice opening along the bottom edge. Same half inch seam allowance. Okay, what we have now are four bags Aside from the sizing of the box corners, all the bags are exactly the same shape. So whether you've used one piece of fabric or two pieces of fabric, you'll still end up with the same bag except for the boxed corners that you decide to do. We now need to close up the corners, but I also want to put handles inside these bags. So let's take this one here. This is the narrowest. And we're going, this is where the zip is underneath there. And we want to put some handles in our bag. And I want the handles to just sit. They're just going to be small handles. They're just going to be tiny little carry handles. I want my handles to be two inches longer on each side. So whatever this is, add four inches. We'll do the same for this one here. Whatever that is, we're going to add four inches for the bigger one as well. We'll do that for all four of our bags. So this one has ended up seven inches across. I've cut my handles at 11 inches and I have two of those. So where the zip is, we're going to open out the corners now. Line up the center of the zip with the seam line of the main part of your bag. I'm opening my seams for this one. And we're going to do the same with the lining section. So this is the side that's got the zip on it. So we have an opening there and we have a little opening just here. Now we want to get our handles in, so I'm just going to feed this strap in on one side and I'm going to centre that in the opening here. 
I'll clip that in place and I'll take the other one and I'll do the same thing, just feed that in and clip that one in place. Open out the rest of that lining section there and just place all of the layers together. And when we take this to the machine, we're going to sew down that long edge along there. Stitch your seams open. So we're doing the lining and the main at the same time. On the other side, we're just going to open out the lining and we'll press the seams open. And at this end where the zip is here, find the handles and bring them through so that they are nice and straight. You don't want to have them twisted. So find the edge, make sure it's flat. And what you can do is just clip it in place until you're ready to line it up so that you know that this is nice and flat on the inside. Do the same with the other handle. I'll just sit that in place until I've secured the zipper area. So once again, I'll open that seam and there's my zip. And then you can close up the section where the handle is. And then spread out the lining open up that seam allowance as well and line up the seam with the center of the zip underneath clip all of those layers together and these layers can be clipped together you can finger press the rest of the seam open you can see that little opening there that's where we're going to turn it through shortly. Find the other end, pinch the edges, and then we have the main bag section, the bottom to do. Open out your seams again. And this side is the last side. Okay, so these, this is ready to go to the machine now and once I've done this for the other bags, we'll take it all together. So we're going to sew the bottom edges of the main, the bottom edges of the lining and then we are going to sew the area that's got the zip, the zip is in the middle here, we're going to sew the lining and the main and the handles all in one go. This section here I will actually double stitch and when I turn around on the other side, this is the other side with the zip, I'll do the same thing. I'm sewing together lining, batting, the bag and to the handles so I want to make sure that's nice and secure. And we'll do that for all of the bags. When you do this, make sure that your zips are open and the other thing I would do before you go and finish all of your bags if you're doing a bulk lot is turn it the right way around and just make sure you've done your handles properly because you don't want to have to go through and unpick everything later. So I'll clip all of these and then we'll go to the machine. Looks like a squeaker box, doesn't it? This last one that only has a very small box corner, which is only, I think it was an inch and a half, I will only be putting one handle strap on the bag. So what we need to do again, measure the distance along here and add two inches to either side. When we're putting that through, just place your handle all the way through, look for it as it's passing through and keep it nice and flat. And you'll do the same for all of them. But this one here is going to sit straight along the edge of the zip. So I've got the orientation the right way and I'm just going to bring this edge along to the zip, clip it in place there, double check that I've got it nice and straight all the way along 
and you'll just feel the handle as you're going along and clip it to the other side of the zip as well. This one with the smaller boxing is only going to have the one handle and the rest can have two. And then you can just clip it together the same way you do the rest of it. Okay, I've clipped everything together. Now it's time to take this to the machine. I'm just going to take you with me to do one bag. The finishing up of all of these corners is exactly the same for every single one of these bags. So we will just go now and do one bag together. And remember it's a half inch seam allowance. When you finish sewing up all of your bags, find the opening. This one here is on the side. Grab the outer fabric and pull it all through. Then just poke all the corners out. Have everything sitting nice and flat. So we'll have these corners poked out here and along the bottom. And once you're happy with that and your handles are not twisted, then you can take the lining, find that opening that you've just come through, pinch the edges together at the closed edges and the lining will want to fold underneath following that seam that you've already got there and then you can just take this to the machine and sew that closed and then you're completely finished. I actually really enjoyed doing this experiment with the fabric because as I said earlier I was cutting all four bag fabrics to the same dimensions and what a difference there is in the sizes. This is the one that's got the three inch boxed corners. You can see how much lower that is because that three inch boxing has kind of collapsed the bag both top and bottom. So three inch box corners this one here was one of the bags that was done with one piece of fabric so there's no seam at the bottom there whereas this one here was done with the two pieces of fabric again same size to begin with but you've got the two tones there which I kind of like I do actually like that with a lot of my remnant fabrics and we've got the seam along the bottom there so three inches two inches this one here has the one inch boxed corners, both top and bottom. And you can see it's a lot narrower compared to all of these bags. Yet it's a lot higher. So you can see what difference different kind of boxings can make to one particular piece of fabric. Again, this one here has got the seam on the bottom because I've joined two different colored fabrics together. And this one here was the single fabric again. But with this one, I tried something different. This bag here, this one has two inch corners, both top and bottom. This one here has two inches at the top and two and a half inches at the bottom. It's only a slight difference, but you can see how it tapers in on the side there. I kind of like that accompanied with a better fabric than this one something that's got a little bit more structure this bag will I think look amazing I'm going to do more of these I really like that tapered look on the side rather than from the front and each of the bags have got two handles on them except for the narrow one that only had the one and a half inch box corner in hindsight I should have made the handles a fair bit longer I think they're a little bit too close to the top of the bag. Rather than adding four inches to the width of the zip, I think I might add six to eight inches for future bags. But I've actually really enjoyed doing this one. I hope you've learned something about boxing. I've had lots of people ask me questions about box corners and can I do more comparison videos? And this wasn't actually going to start out like that. I didn't really know what I was going to make with those two pieces of fabric. Uh, but I 
hope this has helped um, some people understand those box corners even better. Last week I did that video with the corners on the bottom of cosmetic bags. This week I've done the box corners on both the top and the bottom. Hopefully that has solved some of the problems that a lot of people have been having, including myself, with box corners and how they work. Which one do you like? I don't like the fabric, I've got to be honest there. It's a little bit too soft and floppy for me. I think it needs to be more robust. I've got nearly 200 pieces of fabric that were all cut to the same size. They're all remnants and I'm going to have to make some more bags. I've got a few options to choose from here. So I'm going to put these in the shop and see what kind of feedback I get from customers about them, see what they like better, see which one sells better as well. And that might help me decide which way I go. I don't think I'm going wrong with any of the sizes though. I think they'll all work for some purpose, but definitely longer handles. And this is a great one to do if you've got denim offcuts. I do have somebody that's asked about, you know, uh, turning denim jeans into bags. This is something that you can do. You don't need to purchase any bag hardware. You can just use the same denim that you have in your jeans as, all, as well as your fabric and have handles without any hardware that you've had to purchase. I've waffled on enough. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I shall catch you next time. Let me know which one you like. Bye for now.